So this video is of the cab floor for my 80 short box. And um, I've got it about, well, one half is done, but I'm going to say it's about a third done because the driver's side is going to be a whole lot more. I'm probably not going to do many videos on that part just because um, it's basically the same process as what you're about to see. Uh, there's a couple more steps in it, so I might I might take a couple videos of the, the different things I'm going to do. So, but today is cold outside. I haven't worked on that truck for a while. I've had a few other things to do, and I'm probably not going to get a chance for a while. I've got a bunch of stuff coming up uh, with most of my free time. So, anyway, uh, today is January 1. It is currently 1 below, and I think we have already exceeded our expected daily high for the day so that's why another reason why i'm not in the shop is it's cold and windy and i don't feel like wasting a lot of energy on heat out there so uh anyway enjoy the video as much as you can thanks this is the side we're going to start with first the passenger side it's the easier side easier patch to put in a little smaller um and it's just this i don't have to make an extra one so I did notice a couple differences between the original floor and the patch over there. You can, oh, it actually shows up pretty good in the camera. There's an indentation right here, kind of a C shape with a slice through it, and then there's a little one right here, which does not exist here. There's this little bump out here, but nothing else over here. You know what? That's fine. My plan is to seam it right about here, you know, all the way across and up here, and then roughly up in this direction somewhere. So hopefully those are about the right width apart so uh, I can make those. And then I'm not sure how I'm going to run this line, if I'm going to run it really close, if I'm going to run it right in the middle of that thing. That's kind of my initial indication would be here, just because I've got a little extra strength. Uh, we'll just, I'll, I'll cut back farther here first, see what it looks like, see what kind of what I've, what it, what I, what I feel like doing, I guess. I guess I'll be all touchy-feely. What I feel like doing when I get into this. So I've got the, uh, the hole kind of roughed in a little bit. Found a couple things in the process. One, I've got a few pinholes right in this area. There's one, there's a couple more right there. You can kind of see them. Uh, and then over here, I got a couple also, right about there, and that one shows up really nice on camera. So I think I'm gonna actually bring the seam over to that area. Just because I think when I sandblast this, I'm gonna find probably a few more. So even though it's a nice straight spot to, to cut, I'm gonna go a little deeper. Uh, over here, this panel, I, they used to make good patch panels. They just don't anymore. So I gotta trim this off. And then this part here should have been, as factory, would have been folded down, not up. So this is just gonna get cut off. I'm gonna have to do just kind of butt weld that one in there both top and bottom and uh, a couple other tips and trick tips and techniques so you can see i've got the tape on here uh that's my the cut line you can use masking tape it gives you a really nice straight line to follow when you're when you're cutting a patch i've got the same thing up top um what else oh so then on the truck, you know, on this part here, I'm going to cut here, but I'm not going to cut this out. And then I can hopefully lay this flat, and hopefully that'll be enough metal to cover the bad spots in the actual floor. We'll see. Uh, something else, when you're putting in a patch panel, decide which end is your anchor, or what side is your anchor. And that's the end you'll start in first, first tacking, screwing it all down and stuff. And the reason why is... This floor pan, even the good ones, you know, they're always a little bit, the shape isn't 100% right. So as you, you know, screw it down, weld it down, it shifts, you know, so like if this is, this will be my anchor end because I need to hopefully have enough here, but that's also a good, a good solid, unchangeable reference point. So then as, as it gets put in there, when the time comes to actually put it in there, you know, this end may shift up or down a little bit, and that doesn't really matter that much. So long as you've got enough overlap so you can get a good weld, you're fine. But like I say, have an anchor end. That way, you know, because if you start on this end and this shifts, you know, a quarter inch or a half inch, you know, you may have just completely hosed yourself in getting everything to fit right. You know, then this might not fit right. Well, that might not fit right anyway, so I have a feeling I might... I might just be making 
that hole and hopefully I can get the body plug in there the way I want to. Or I just glue the body plug in knowing full well once it's together I hopefully will never ever have to take that apart again. I've got it roughed in there, the, the patch roughed. Probably pretty close to the way it's going to be until I actually weld it in. And then I'll trim as I need. So it actually fits in there pretty decent. These almost line up, you know, to get these divots in there. So that that's really what has to line up on the top side. Uh, and uh, like I say, it's going to fit pretty good. I got a little more of a gap there than I was hoping for. But that's what a wire feed is for. It'll feed some wire in there. And I will show you something. Get this out of the way. So once I got it in there, sometimes it's really tough to tell where your edges are, where your seams are. So this is what happens to cans of spray paint that are almost done. I'll lay this in there as best I can and then I'll just kind of hit it. You can see right there, that gives me exactly where, within a margin of error, where the patch is actually gonna sit when it starts getting attached, welded in. And uh, so now I can kind of trim off some of the stuff, get rid of some of this, this bad metal here and just get rid of all the excess over in this area. And then this will be pretty much done. I might, I might trim this up a little bit, I might not. Um, because every time I push in there, this, the edge of the, the patch keeps sliding down. Because initially, I, at first I used just a Sharpie and it was way up here. I did some trimming and then it came down to here. Did a little more trimming here, then when I lean on it, it moves a little farther. So every time I work it, it's shifting this way. Exactly what I talked about before. So I think this is pretty close. I'll get some trimming done on it. And then I'm gonna call this one good. Then I think I'm gonna start on this, this corner back here, which um, I don't think it's gonna be that terribly difficult. I just gotta build a patch. So all the trimming is done, well the cutting is done, they may have to do trimming. Obviously this side is done, you saw that earlier. I got these back corners on both sides kind of trimmed out where the rust was. Because it's just this seam basically, you know, water was getting in behind that seam sealer and uh, causing it to rot. Which is weird, I have another cab out there from an 84 that the floor is pretty much gone and this piece right here is perfect but I can't get at it to cut the patch panels out. So uh, this side, I found a little more rot on the top of the inner rocker. So I'll just have to, that's just a simple straight bends to make a piece to fill in for that. Otherwise, otherwise, yeah, it's pretty close to the done. Uh, right here, the patch didn't fit this corner, you know, at all whatsoever. So it comes up to about here. I will have to, once I sandblast that, see once how bad that gets. Maybe I have to make a patch. Maybe I can just get away with um, kind of just filling it in as I weld. Well, we'll kind of see. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll just see once how many more little pinholes show up as to what else I have to do, if anything, over here. So the cab wasn't quite as nice as I was hoping or expecting. I knew there was going to be rot on this side. There almost always is. But the extent of it, and over on the other side, and then of course these weird things on the back of the cab corners. I don't know, that was weird to me too, so. Well, that's all for now until I get it outside and get it sandblasted, and then start cleaning up the edges. And uh, as you can see, probably see, I've uh, sandblasted all the edges where I'm gonna put in my patch panels. And on this side, I've sprayed in, uh, Permatex rust treatment. It's a good rust neutralizer for lighter stuff. You know, up here where I've got some thicker stuff kind of in corners and stuff, I will be putting in um, rust mort. That stuff right there. I'll be putting it in later because the squirter thing is broken. And I will show you, and you can, whoops, you can kind of see it, it turns purple, in some cases really dark, kind of depending on how it happens to react with that piece of metal. This side I haven't done yet. You can kind of see a whole bunch of little pinholes there I gotta deal with. And then some more up here. I think my patch will cover all that. We shall see. And uh, that's pretty much all I sandblasted was just around these patches for now. Eventually all of it's gonna get hit. 
And um, but for now, I'm just gonna sandblast what I need, and that's it. So so the patch is screwed in place. I uh, kind of screwed it down in a few places. Drew on the bottom side where everything was, so I knew where to put all drill all my holes for my spot welds and stuff. Cleaned it up, weld through primer on everything, screwed her back down good and tight. I don't have enough screws for everything, so as I kind of finish an area, I'll have to move the screws. Pretty typical. Uh, I have one issue that's oil canned a little bit, but I'm fairly certain once that welds in, that's probably going to go away, and if it doesn't, well, then I have a way to fix that later on too. But you know, don't be don't be scared if you come up with something like that. As like I say, once once everything gets welded in place, that expansion and contraction of the metal will usually take care of that. And if it doesn't, there's fixes to that I can explain later. And so there we have our initial weld in. Might look a little ugly, but it's gonna get the job done. I still have to do finish stitch welding there. The these screws are gonna be a little too warm for me to take out right now. So I'll let it cool, pull all the screws out, finish that up, get the other all the rest of the patches in on the cab. I'll flip it upside down, or at least on its back, I should say. Then I can weld from the other side the overlap. And uh that should be good. And this oil can that was over here before, that floor doesn't even move right now. So that has been resolved. Okay, this is the back of the cab corner. The obviously the one I cut out. Here's my replacement patch. You can kind of see maybe a little better looking at the back side. There's fewer lines on it, and it seems to show up pretty well. But I think I did a pretty darn good job of it. Got that detail in there. I was worried about it because it's a little bit crooked. If there you go, you can kind of see a little bit of the the edge is a little bit wavy. When I started looking at this one, edges is wavy on this one too. So. Good. My mistake is actually closer to factory than anything. So the only difference is there's a little divot right there. Um, I'm not worrying about that. I don't even know what that's for. Uh, so that'll go in there. It's almost ready to go. I gotta clean it up a little bit, put some weld through coating on. And that's good. I will show you kind of the, the interim step. There's one that I screwed up. I bent it the wrong direction. So this is for the other side, obviously. And here's here's the piece that came out of there. Um, and I used my uh, my bead roller with a flanging um, tool on it to get this kind of offset. There's whatever roll, I guess. It's not really an offset. And then I'll cut it off, you know, kind of right on that bottom, and then tap it over a little more with the hammer so it's a little closer to a right angle. So, and this is what I'm talking about. One of these guys. Uh, this is my bead roller. This is the the deeper step that I've got that I use for that first one And then there's that other angled um, Indent in there and I'll be using This one there's like three different depths of the The flange or the step off depending on what whatever you want to call them And I think I've got three different actual beads, you know the round beads This tool is an awesome thing. I bought this at Harbor Freight for like a third of the price what anybody else was selling them for and they're the exact same thing so and i think with the right machine shop a guy could probably go ahead and have different types of these made um i just haven't got around to that because i've been able to make everything i need with this this is an awesome tool once you're good at it you can pretty much build anything you know i could probably build these floor pans that were in here with a little bit of practice and um, if I needed to, but it's that old question of what's worth more, your time or your money. For what I can buy these floor pans for, I'm not gonna try to make them. However, if I couldn't buy a floor pan, I could make one. I made one for Cordoba trunks. But anyway, enough about that. That's kind of the next step. I'll get this other patch made, finished off. I'll get this one put in on this corner, do that one on that corner, and then I'll start working on that gaping hole over there, the driver's floor on that side. And uh, then it's off to the next step, flip it over. Actually, no, I got all these stupid extra holes like there I talked about before from that, you know, their rust proofing or whatever they did. I've got oh, a good half a dozen of them. I got a weld shut 
because I'm not going to leave those. Uh, yeah, good enough for now.